Hafede, Ali, Mogestin, Dananim, Kasalelie, Lenwo, Yokwe, and hello. I'm joining you today from Guam or Guahan, the land of the indigenous Chamorro people. Thank you for joining us on the eve of Earth Day, everyone, to celebrate the 15 years of progress and impact toward our original Micronesia Challenge commitment to effectively conserve at least 30% of nearshore marine resources and 20% of terrestrial resources across Micronesia by 2020. Together, we will celebrate the bright spots, reflect on the lessons, and be inspired by the commitment to the next decade of action on the global goals. Before we get started, we would like to know where you are joining us from. So please, if you can, in the chat window, please share where you're joining from, the traditional name of that land, and if you like your affiliation and title. Our Micronesian culture is rich in storytelling. This forum is not just about any one story, but of all of us sharing our stories together. In a few minutes, we will hear from the leaders of the Micronesia Challenge. I'm so excited. You will then have a chance to share your stories of what has worked, which we are calling Bright Spots, in small breakout groups of around four people. Bright Spots are examples of what has worked, what has made a change or impact, they can be large or small, an initiative or project, organization, or even somebody that you're inspired by. You, do, you don't need to have uh, prepared for this in advance, so don't worry about it. All stories and bright spots are important. Today is a celebration. It is a chance to connect, share stories, and get energized for the next decade of action. You should have received by email a participant guide, and this should have the agenda as well as all the questions we will be asking today. If you haven't received this now, from the uh, please check in the chat window for a link. A few matters for housekeeping. During the plenary sessions, please have your cameras on for social connection, but stay muted. Comments can be made via the chat window. During the breakout groups, you can then unmute. We will be recording the main plenary conversations and what is being shared through the chat box. Um, in the breakout groups, we will not be recording that. If you have any problems, you can leave a breakout group at any time and our event support team will be able to help. If you need help during any of the sessions, please type in the chat to Lauren, our concierge, or you can email mcro.coordinator at gmail.com. Thank you to everyone who has helped make today's event happen. We are thrilled to have the support of the University of Guam Center for Island Sustainability for helping us today to manage this important event. I am now pleased to introduce you a longtime friend and supporter of the Micronesia Challenge, Trina Leverer of the Nature Conservancy will be our moderator today. Thank you so much, Jara. In December 2006, I had the pleasure to facilitate part of the kickoff meeting for the first Micronesia Challenge Action Planning meeting in Palau. I'm thrilled to be here now, 15 years later, celebrating the MC with old friends and new. And it's my very great pleasure to introduce His Excellency David W. Panuelo, President of the Federated States of Micronesia, Chair of the Micronesian Islands Forum, and our hosts today. President Panuelo assumed office in May 2019 and has been instrumental to the Micronesia Challenge. Take it away, President Panuelo. Kasselelia from the Federated States of Micronesia to all of you. Uh, you all are looking so pretty and handsome out there. And if this is one of the side effects of this pandemic, then uh, it's one of the positive things that's happening in our region and uh, throughout. Thanks to all of you. 
Before I begin, uh, I want to begin by recognizing our uh, head of states, the leaders throughout our Micronesia-wide region. I want to begin by recognizing His Excellency, uh, President David Kabua of the, of the Republic of the Marshall Islands. I want to also recognize my other brother and uh, friend, His Excellency Surungal Wips uh, Jr., President of Palau. Also want to recognize the Honorable Ralph uh, Torres, Governor of the CNMI, uh, the Honorable Lou uh, Carrero, Governor of Guam, our FSM governors throughout our federation. I also uh, want to recognize all of you for your good efforts in our efforts of uh, uh, being united in our federation. I want to recognize also our uh, MCD, Executive Director Willy Kostiga, uh, the Micronesia Challenge uh, Coordinator and Board. And uh, all of you, our regional and uh, international partners and donors who have been uh, longtime uh, partners in the uh, shared vision and mission in uh, preserving our uh, natural resources throughout our uh, region of Micronesia. I know that a lot of people are, uh, are joining us as we speak. I say hello to all of you. Uh, I don't, I can't recognize each and every one of you, but we are the family of uh, the region and beyond uh, doing incredible work that we are celebrating uh, today. So today being a, a celebratory event, it is both a happy occasion and an excite, uh, exciting time uh, to uh, share uh, these accomplishments. So I want to bring a very warm Caselelia uh, uh, greetings from our nation, Federated States of Micronesia, to all of you leaders, to all our citizens and partners uh, throughout uh, the region and beyond. On the eve of Earth Day, we have come together today to celebrate the 15 years of progress and impact toward our original Micronesia challenge, commitment to effectively conserve at least 30% of our nearshore marine resources and 20% of the terrestrial resources across our Micronesia wide region by 2020. And we have achieved that uh, major commitment. It's, a, it's something we can be proud of uh, uh, today and uh, as we celebrate uh, today in this uh, celebratory occasion, it is fitting to do this celebration uh, after 15 years. As we are now embarking on the next decade of expanded uh, commitment in our uh, uh, global, regional and global effort. So thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us today in this unique celebration. As you all know, the heart of the Micronesia challenge is people, our citizens, respective citizens across our Micronesian region. People from our communities to global partners united in a common mission to permanently protect our habitat resources in our invaluable region. Today, Today's forum reflects this vision and common goal. It is a challenge for our people to unite in celebration. And it is a chance for our people to unite in celebration of our collective progress and impact. Today, we want to celebrate the stories of what has worked, the bright spots has been mentioned in the Micronesian challenge. This is not just about one person's story, but about hearing your stories that have made our Micronesian challenge a success. In 2006, when our formidable leaders from the Federated States of Micronesia, Republic of the Marshall Islands, the Republic of Palau, the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, and the territory of Guam launched the Micronesian challenge it was one of the world's most ambitious 
conservation commitments. It is and it inspired similar island commitments such as the Caribbean Challenge Initiative and the Aloha Plus Challenge through the Global Highland Partnership. I have always said in my statement uh, here in the FSM in the region and abroad that we are a big ocean state and we are. The ocean feeds us, it connects us, it supports us, it protects us and it unites us. Just as the Micronesian Challenge has united us to make significant progress and in fact, toward our goal. Our region has put in place over, and I repeat, over 150 protected areas. More than 3,000 people have been trained in an array of conservation areas. And we are working to protect more than 1,300 species of fish and more than 480 species of coral. Now, I tell you, that is a significant uh, progress and something to celebrate. In Pone Bay, Traditional leaders and communities have been more engaged, engaged in protected area management and conservation through programs such as the community cross-site visit program. In the state of Koshai, stakeholders came together to protect pristine native forests and waterways from threats of development through the Yala Valley Conservation Eastman, and I'm sure some of you have heard about this uh, uh, great conservation effort by Koshai. Onesam community in Chuk built a marine locally managed area as an approach to addressing the problem of overfishing. They worked with several reef owners across large marine areas to put in place broader fisheries management approaches versus only no take zones. In Yap, our great state of Yap, the government and landowners work together to improve the land from both conservation and human use value. Yap's forest stewardship program has worked with over 50 landowners through the forestry division with support from the US Forest Service. One specific achievement under the Micronesia Challenge that I would like to uh, continue or would like to continue to implement is operationalizing the FSM protected area network through MBA design, capacity building, setting up the state level fan or protected area network implementation in institutions and providing sustainable funding to community resilience. And I cannot overemphasize this point because in this time of a pandemic, these extraordinary times we're living in, the food security is all the more emphasized. And in terms of the uh, protected area network, as a chairman of our resources and development committee, when I was serving in our Congress of Micronesia, I played a very uh, uh, vital uh, role in having that uh, protected area network framework policy adopted by our Congress. And so we're doing this in our respective states to uh, follow, uh, follow suit. One particular initiative supporting pan operations, protected area site management and enforcement is the FSM Rich to Reef uh, project with the aim to implement an integrated reef to reach approach to enhance ecosystem services, to conserve globally important biodiversity and to sustain local livelihoods in the FSM. And I'm very grateful to the UNTB for funding this in the past cycles and the GEF and uh, TNC in partnering to help 
FSM on our rich to reef program. Every time I extend the contracts for these very uh, workers, uh, it makes my heart clap to see that they're working to uh, enhance our protected areas near shore and our terrestrial areas. And so it's, it's something I'm very, very proud of. We have some incredible progress led by our people to make an impact. However, the work of the challenge is not yet finished. We will continue to embed the lessons and build on our successes and bright spots as we move into the next decade of action. Now we are looking at the future to our expanded goals to conserve half of our marine resources and 30% of terrestrial resources by 2030 and to be a strong voice for climate change and sustainability in Micronesia across the five jurisdictions from the FSM to Guam, Palau, RMI, of course, CNMI. And I wanna just add here that I'm very uh, proud that our colleague, president of the uh, Republic of the Marshall Islands, as we are speaking of uh, climate change, that he has been invited by President Python to be among 40 leaders who will be speaking on the Python uh, Climate uh, Change Summit. I want to also share that we pre-recorded a statement that I have sent to the Nobel Prize uh, Climate Summit. I believe the event will be happening early next week uh, to also lend our voice in the area of climate change. And we all have to really stick together on our commitment to pushing and making sure our voice is heard in the region and beyond and globally in our efforts fighting climate change. The Micronesia Challenge 2030 is our platform to regionally collect locally led action to spirit the UN 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. And I wanna add here that we have a working group that's been meeting regularly to assess where we are in the implementation of the uh, SDGs. And I, I also trust that this is happening in your respective countries in our collective effort to uh, uh, push on with our goals in the next decade. As a leader in SDG uh, implementation, we are very excited to be a member of the local 2030 island network and to take the best of what our islands are doing to the rest of the world. Our 2030 goals are ambitious and realistic as it should be. In July, 2019, when the Micronesian Leaders Island Forum agreed on this pledge, the Vice President, uh, Joshua George and I had a number of lengthy discussions about how we can make this happen. Because I believe that, as you all know, our environment is our livelihood. Uh, we cannot be just, just saying words, mere words, but this has to really reflect our, our goals and our passion to make sure that we continue to be the example of uh, uh, conservation and protection of our resources. Part of the answer was through the development of a new partnership with the Blue Prosperity Coalition which I have developed in our nation. Uh, the coalition to develop the Pro Blue Prosperity Micronesia program, a partnership inclusive of the government of the FSM with our states of Yap, Chuk, Pone Bay and Koshai and the Wade Institute. Oceans 5, National Geographic, Pristine Seas, Micronesian Conservation Trust and our very own Micronesian, Micronesia Challenge. The Blue Prosperity Micronesia seeks to protect 30% of FSM's total exclusive economic zone by 2030. And I know that sounds very ambitious, uh, as it should be. We've already protected 12 miles of the state territories in our 1 million exclusive economic zone. While I was in Congress, we also passed a law that extends that to 24 miles of no commercial fishing. And so we will be exploring how our ocean, which protects us and sustains us, uh, how we can come up with innovative ideas of uh, 
preserving certain sections of our very huge uh, exclusive economic zone to protect the resources that generate uh, a part, a big part of our, our uh, national income. This commitment would create the seventh largest protected area in the world and ensure that fisheries continue to flourish, ecosystems remain intact, and better buffers for climate change. Beyond this 30% protection of our exclusive economic zone, FSM has partnered with the Nature Conservancy, and I thank TNC for being a committed partner, and launched the Technology for Tuna Transparency, or T3, challenge to use emerging technology toward achieving 100% traceability and transparency in FSM tuna fishery that will contribute to improving the sustainability of the fishery that contributes, as I was saying earlier, about 70% of FSM's uh, GDP. And this is valued between 60 to 70 million annually uh, for our nation's uh, budget. And that's why fisheries is such an important, and the ocean, such an important uh, resource to protect and make sure that it's sustainable. Ladies and gentlemen and friends, a better world, I have always said, is not something we ask for. A better world is something we build. We define a better wor world through consensus like we are doing today with a foundation of empathy and love for our and for other human beings. We construct a better world by acknowledging that we are who we choose to be and then choosing to take the responsibility for both ourselves and our communities. And I'm very proud of the Micronesian challenge and our, our uh, endeavors up to this very day today. Thank, thank you all, to all of you. I thank you, our people, our dedicated supporters and partners for your dedication, your grit and determination in the first 15 years of our Micronesian challenge uh, commitment. We are a family uh, in the Micronesia wide region. I thank you all and I call on all of us here today and those who love Micronesia to help us make the Micronesia challenge 2030, a reality. Thank you all for giving me the opportunity to open and invite all of you uh, to be part of this celebratory event. And it is right that we celebrate because we've achieved significant uh, achievement or goals that we have set out for ourselves up to 2020. And now we embark on the next decade of commitment in expanded protection of our natural resources and conservation efforts that we are doing. So I thank all of you for being committed partners for the FSM and for the Micronesia Challenge uh, uh, partners and family for our uh, Micronesia uh, sub-region and region. Thank you all again. The Micronesia Challenge started in 2006 by our formidable leaders coming together to protect what gives us life in our islands for future generations. It is a commitment to effectively conserve 30% of nearshore marine resources and 20% of terrestrial resources by 2020. This commitment was not an empty promise and built on tradition. As former president of Palau, Tommy Ramangasau recalls, the Micronesia challenge is the cultural and traditional values that Pacific Islanders place on the environment and what the resources of the ocean and land have to offer. We grow up being taught the importance about striking that balance between harvesting and protection. The ocean is your father, the land is your mother. Those are the values that we place throughout our communities. We've always had this bull, as we call it, but it's actually the Protected Areas Network. The Micronesia Challenge sustained 17 political transitions from 2006 to today's current leaders. The Micronesia Challenge was designed to tie in the long-term regional conservation targets with sustainable financing. The Micronesia Conservation Trust helped reach that goal. Since the islands joined a regional commitment, it attracted more investment from donors who could see a bigger return on their investment. By coming together in a regional endowment, we've been able to grow our capital faster. 
As of today, we've invested in $25 million into the endowment. Overall, we have raised or leveraged over $82 million so far. In 2006, three monitoring teams were formed to measure marine, terrestrial, and socioeconomic progress, and was comprised of local scientists and managers from all over the islands. Since then, all jurisdictions increased the number of areas placed under conservation in some form or another. We now have more than 70 new areas under conservation and improved science to management decision making across the region. We have increased the number of leaders in conservation and inspired youth to become the future leaders of Micronesia Challenge 2030. Through the collective effort of Pacific Island Manage and Protected Area Community Partners, or PIMPAC, we have enhanced capacity to improve management in protected areas. With the Micronesia Challenge, our impact has been as deep as the Marianas Trench, inspiring similar regional island commitments around the world, including the Aloha Plus Challenge and the Caribbean Challenge Initiative. We are connected locally, regionally, and globally. Thank you to our donors and supporters. Join us to continue our legacy to the Micronesia Challenge 2030 goals. As you can see from that amazing video, a huge amount of progress has been made over the past 15 years. From improved management, new protected areas, leveraging new resources, and building lots of local capacity. You'll all receive a copy of the Micronesia Challenge Evaluation Summaries after the event. So if you were struggling to kind of read things as the video was going, you will get to see them and pour over them um, at, to your heart's content. I'm now very pleased to introduce His Excellency David Kabua, President of the Republic of the Marshall Islands. President Kabua assumed office in January, 2021. My fellow presidents, chief executives, ladies and gentlemen, Yahweh and warm greetings from the Marshall Islands. It is a great honor and pleasure to be with you today as co-host of this special event. Like many of the communities throughout Micronesia, the Marshallese people have a strong connection to the natural resources and the biodiversity of our precious islands. Not only does it provide for our food and well being, but it also provides the basis of our culture and society. Our collective journey as members of the Micronesia Challenge began in 2006. And since then, the Marshall Islands has successfully established a network of community-based conservation areas and supported the development of resource management plans throughout the Raymond Lock framework. Our national conservation area plan is called the Raymond Lock, which means looking into the future. The Raymond Lock framework is locally developed and locally driven by conservation practitioners who live and work in our communities. And the aim of this framework is to ensure that our natural ecosystems and the services they provide are protected and preserved for the current and future generations. The Raymond are protected Areas Network is a prime example of government and community collaboration in support of both the Micronesia Challenge goals and our own national policy. The Raymond Framework has and will continue to be the mainstay of our efforts in achieving our 2030 goals. Excellencies, Chief Executives, ladies and gentlemen, without a doubt, climate change poses an ex existential threat 
to us all, but particularly low-lying atoll nations. It is therefore critical to build the resiliency of our people through ecosystem-based adaptation and community-led initiatives. Over the past 15 years, our partnership and cooperation among each other has been a hallmark of our success. And the Marshall Island looks forward to building on that shared success with increased ambition and unswerving commitment to our two and 30 Micronesia Challenge goals. We look forward on how we can explore and mobilize resources to assist the MG initiatives for the betterment of the Micronesian communities. In the spirit of partnership, we also look forward to learning from the recent success of the Guam and Hawaii Great Green Growth Initiatives. And in that same spirit, I am pleased to announce that the RMI will be joining the Global 2030 Island Network. Now, on behalf of my government, and the Marshallese people, we look forward to tackling new challenges, forcing new partnerships, and achieving new goals in the new decade. Thank you, and komoldada. Thank you so much, President Kabua. I'm now pleased to introduce His Excellency Sarangal S. Whips, Jr., President of the Republic of Palau. President Whips assumed office in January of this year, and we are so pleased to have him join us as a leader in the Micronesia Challenge. Thank you, um, Ali, uh, Excellencies, um, Chief Executives, and all uh, participants this morning. It is indeed an honor to uh, have this opportunity to share and celebrate the, the um, impacts that Micronesian Challenge has had to our region. Uh, first of all, uh, I think um, the events in this past year uh, really um, demonstrated how fragile uh, life is on islands. Um, in fact, uh, with COVID, we were struck with uh, uh, an economic disaster and a, and a health challenge. And then just uh, a few days ago, we had been struck with um, a storm, a typhoon, uh, and it's not typhoon season. So, you know, it, it just reminds us of uh, the challenges that we face in this global uh, uh, this, this, this world that we're in and, and how we need to really come together and work together uh, on global issues. Uh, and my, Micronesian Challenge is, is an example of that partnership, that relationship, and really, I look at it as the Pacific family working together and demonstrating to the world through leadership on how we can make an impact uh, on these very fragile, and precious resources that we have and the treasures that we have in our region. Uh, you know, I, I think of uh, our, our culture and, and the way we uh, live. Uh, we're, we're small islands, few people, but we, when, when tragic, tragedy strikes, we all come together. Uh, whether it's a, a funeral or building a home, uh, we have extended families, which a lot of times in, the, in Western cultures, they don't have. But us in the islands, we value those extended families. And I think this uh, effort that we have shows that extension of the family that we're all Micronesian brothers and we all need to come together on these important issues. So celebrating these, these uh, 15 years that we have been together and what has been achieved, it's critical to realize that our survival, our, these important resources uh, that we treasure continue for generations to come. So mm -hmm. those relationships uh, sometimes uh, require a lot of hard work. And that hard work, I think, is what has brought, brought us to where we are today. 
And uh, I mean, I, I congratulate, I, I thank the leadership that, 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 that preceded us for really bringing us together. And, and, and through those partnerships, we've learned from each other. We've developed policies to protect our, our marine protected areas. We've uh, come up with a sustainable finance technology. In fact, because of COVID, one of the ways to uh, uh, keep our financing going forward for our marine protected areas uh, uh, requires us uh, to use uh, funds from the funds that we collect from our, our visitors. But because we had no visitors, it was important that we had the Micronesian challenge to help su supplement those important activities that we keep going. So, uh, you know, it's those partnerships that have helped us uh, really plan for the future and make sure that we continue uh, to protect these important areas. Uh, you know, uh, President Panuelo, I am. Uh, excited to hear your continued commitment. And I think the commitment of all of us uh, to uh, have for 2030 to at least protect 50% of our marine resources and 30% of our terrestrial resources. I think that shows that we, how much we depend on our ocean. Our ocean is our, our, our father. It is uh, what sustains our lives. Uh, it's important for our people in terms of rep. You know, uh, many years ago, I think we didn't have freezers and we didn't have lots of tourists. So many times uh, because of that, we do overfishing and, and, and we may abuse the resources that God has given us. But because of these actions that we've taken, uh, I think not just for our region, but for the world, we're helping make sure that tuna continues to be sustainable uh, and, and we can feed the world and feed ourselves. And uh, the, 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 uh, the protected area networks that we see are really an outgrowth of what we've always practiced uh, over generations and generations. Uh, we've, we've always believed in the bull. We've always believed that uh, we, we cannot overfish. We need to build alliances. We need to work together. Uh, in fact, we were hunter-gatherers in, in the olden days, and because of we were hunter-gatherers, we were always, always fighting over resources because that's where we got our, our food to eat. And, and because of that, we, we had to forge alliances. We had to work together in, in our small community. Now we've expanded that to Micronesia and hopefully to the world, and it's great to see the progress around the world following Micronesia's lead. And uh, I really encourage us to continue in that leadership role and to help our global partners uh, understand uh, the fragile uh, environments that we live in, the challenges that we have with climate change, and, and, that, and that we continue to lead by showing we're doing our part in the world uh, to battle climate change and to uh, create sustainable uh, economies that use uh, uh, these resources and not only protect them for our region, but for the world. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I just la like, like to end by talking about the, uh, uh, the Palau National Marine Sanctuary. I think that this is another success in our part of doing what we can for uh, our sustainable development goals. Uh, effectively managing these vast marine protected areas requires really a long-term commitment um, and, and it pr provides, uh, you know, uh, we, we need to be forging those important partnerships. Uh, it requires investments and, and uh, you know, those new targets that we've set out to do for 2030 uh, need to continue to uh, be strengthened and we need to continue to work together to build those uh, partnerships and, and really, Leveraging those financial um, uh, uh, and technical uh, partnerships that we need to supporting these large uh, protected areas. Um, I, I just encourage everyone that uh, the success that we've had over the last uh, 15 years needs to continue. We need to continue working together for the, for the future. 
uh, not only for us, but for our children. And I am always reminded by um, a friend of ours always saying that uh, we wanna make sure that our children and children to come will not have to look uh, 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 at the resources we have uh, in textbooks, but uh, to be able to continue to enjoy them and, and to continue, continue to see them and continue to generate um, the livelihoods and sustain our people in years to come. Uh, thank you, uh, President uh, Panuelo and uh, President uh, uh, Kabua and uh, our chief executives for joining us, Governor of Guam, Governor of uh, CNMI, and let's continue to forge those partnerships uh, to keep uh, the Micronesian challenge uh, strong and, and continue that our strong partnership. Thank you and God bless. Thank you so much, President Whips. And I'm now very pleased to introduce the Honorable Ralph DLG Torres, Governor of the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. Governor Torres assumed office in December 2015 as the ninth governor of the Mariana Islands. Thank you. Half a day, uh, Tito. First, I would like to wish everyone a good morning. And uh, welcome everyone around the blue continent. Um, to our friend, our Excellency President David Panuelo of FSM, thank you for hosting this celebration, a very important occasion and event. Um, to our Excellency President David Kabur, congratulations of the Republic of Marshall Islands. And of course, um, our Excellency President Suringal Webb, uh, a friend of the CNMI, uh, thank you again and congratulations. Republic of Palau, and of course, my neighbor, uh, my colleague, Governor Lou Leon Guerrero, and to our distinguished guests and Micronesian Challenge supporters. Micronesian Challenge is very personal to all of us, especially us here in the Micronesia, because a lot of our waters, um, our land, it's more, it's our livelihood. Um, I remember, and I want to share this with everyone. Growing up, my, my parents had two jobs. Uh, my dad worked during the government and during the day. In the evening, he would uh, go fishing. In the morning, we would eat whatever he catches. And it's a, it's a way of life. Uh, growing up, uh, we went and moved to, to the States, then that's when we started eating bacon and eggs. Now that I have children, I wanna, I wanna show them about fishing, the life that I grew up but more so is to protect our waters. What are we doing as Micronesians to showcase that the, the, the opportunity that my dad gave me? Uh, what are we doing? What am I doing to preserve our, our environment so that our kids, my kids, that generation and the next generation? Uh, we have Northern Islands. Uh, CNMI consists of 14 islands. And we say that the Northern Island is the last frontier of the Marianas. And as much as I would love to showcase that around the world, I also want to preserve that. So, you know, this Micronesia challenge is, is so much uh, critical to our livelihood here. Uh, and not just the water. And, and I know uh, President uh, Panuelo, you mentioned um, the ocean is the father and uh, the land is our mother. You know, just like our life uh, at our household, the guys are responsible to clean the outside and the mom is responsible for inside the house. Um, and it's a responsibility that we all hold no matter where we go. And so here I'd like to continue to pledge uh, the CNMI to this good cause, uh, a very important cause. And with our environment and our waters, um, it takes a long time. If damages to our corals, uh, bleach and so forth, it takes time to bring that back. And the easiest way and the best way is to continue to preserve and, and make sure that it's sustainable for all of us. Um, our life changes. Um, a couple years ago, we had a super typhoon, U2, that hit CNMI roughly 180, 200 miles per hour. We're still recovering from that. On top of that, again, with the COVID, everyone is, is going through COVID. And you may you realize how important our waters, our fish, um, everything that it holds. So on behalf of the Commonwealth of the Sinomai, um, our people, 
would like to thank you, uh, Excellency President Panuelo, for, for, for this um, event, this forum. And I ask all of our community, whether you're a tourist, where you live here in Sinomai, or you live in Guam, or anywhere in Micronesia, and anywhere around the world, let's continue to preserve our waters, our land, because that's who we are. It's our culture and our language. Pues, demás, un dokles usmasi para todos hamzo, da malaza ta continua promotehi i tanota, i tasita, i linguahi dan spishat i kuturata. With that, uh, Excellency, thank you, and I look forward for this um, forum, and I can't wait to see you all in person. With that, again, thank you, and a good morning to everyone. Thank you so much, Governor Torres. It's now my great pleasure to introduce my own governor, the Honorable Lourdes A. Leon Guerrero, the governor of Guam, who also happened to, we want to thank her for co-hosting a very successful Guam Green Growth Initiative and um, Conference on Island Sustainability event last week, right here from these studios. She's also the newest co-chair of the Global Island Partnership. Over to you, Governor Leon Guerrero. Thank you very much. Um, and also would like to uh, welcome and greet all of our presidents and executives of the Micronesian Island. President Panuelo, I wish we were having this meeting right there in Pompeii and uh, miss visiting the islands. I would love to go back to Palau. And of course, RMI is uh, one of the um, most relaxing, I think, island that I have in visiting in visiting them. And of course, uh, good morning to my great colleague and neighbor, um, Governor Ralph uh, Torres, who he and I have worked very closely together to help fight this pandemic in this part of our world. I just want to also uh, say hello to all the participants and thank you for this opportunity to say a few remarks of what we're doing here uh, in our island. Buenas than half a day. While COVID-19 brought devastation throughout the world, I cannot help but think the op of the opportunity before us as we rebuild a stronger, healthier, greener, greener society. We are in a unique position to move away from business as usual and change how we approach sustainability. Sustainability and climate change aren't far away concepts for us in Micronesia. They are at the fore forefront of our policies because we know what can happen if we don't do anything. While well, each of our respective jurisdictions have implemented policies to tackle climate change, we know that collective efforts can be more effective at effectuating long lasting impact. The Micronesia Challenge was created, as we all know, to facilitate more effective conservation of marine and forest resources in our uh, part of the world. For us in Guam, our Micronesia Challenge is important because it provided a framework to bring together various conservation initiatives that were happening across the island under one umbrella. It gave us a clear goal with the flexibility to implement a variety of initiatives to meet it. The Micronesia Challenge brought together experts in critical issues like invasive species, biosecurity, climate change, coral reef bleaching, fishery management, watershed management, reforestation, and community planning. Since joining the Micronesia Challenge, we have seen the benefits of regional cooperation. As part of a learning exchange program, Joe Kinata and his brother Jess traveled to Palau to see how one of the communities manage its marine resources. When they returned to Guam, their family started the Humatha Community Foundation, a new community-based NGO. The Humata Community Foundation is focused on land, water conservation, and cultural heritage preservation through education, cooperation, and advocacy. Starting with just immediate family members has now grown to 50 members. 
the seed planted from the Micronesia Challenge Learning Exchange has grown into a generation of stewards who want to protect their environment and protect their cultural heritage as well. Guam has been a regional leader in capacity development for conservation, compliance, and enforcement. What started out as just sharing conservation enforcement training with the CNMI has now expanded to the implementation of the first ever Marine Terrestrial Conservation Enforcement Academy at Guam Community College with graduates from Guam, CNMI, Pompeii, Kosrai, Chuk, Palau, and Yap. Improving forest health is critical to addressing the impacts of climate change. As we move forward, Guam will continue to share its technology and capacity with the region. Although Guam has reforested over 1,120 acres of land, UOG Center for Island Sustainability is testing innovative methods for using drones to disperse seed balls to assist with reforestation efforts. In partnership with NASA, and the Pacific Islands Climate Adaptation Science Center, Guam will have a high resolution maps of Guam's coral reefs. Sustainability is one of my administration's top priorities. During my first year in office, we created the Coral Reef Resilience Strategy, Guam Aquaculture Task Force, the Zero Waste Working Group, Climate Change Re Resiliency Commission and the Guam Green Growth or G3 Working Group. The Zero Waste Working Group was tasked to develop a Guam Zero Waste Master Plan centered on policies to conserve our resources by means of responsible production, consumption, and recovery of products without burning and with no discharges to land, water, or air. The mission of the Climate Change Resiliency Commission is to develop an integrated strategy to combat the impacts of climate change. This is one issue we're working together as a region is very critical. The Hawaii is very critical. After accepting an invitation to join the local 2030 Islands Network from the Hawaii Green Growth Local 2030 Hub and Global Island Partnership in 2019, I signed Executive Order 2019-23, establishing the Guam Green Growth Working Group as part of our commitment to address the 17 United Nations Sustainable Developmental Goals, ranging from no poverty to climate action in an effort to build a more prosperous, equitable, and sustainable island. 97 working group members representing government, academia, nonprofits, and youth developed the G3 action framework to meet the UN's sustainability development goals in locally and culturally effective ways. Facilitated by the University of Guam Center for Island Sustainability and under the great leadership of Austin Shelton, we now have our island's most comprehensive public-private partnership ever created to achieve a sustainable future. I presided over the three G3 biennial meeting earlier this month and we learned how this island is acting on the SDGs by feeding the impoverished, providing unemployment assistance, opening a homeless shelter, improving quality education, advancing aquaculture and agriculture, planning for fossil fuel usage and upgrading to sustainable transportation and transitioning to a circular economy. To track our progress in meeting the sustainable developmental goals, we launched the G3 dashboard, an on-island platform developed in collaboration with Hawaii Green Growth and ESRI that allows open, all-inclusive public access to data on all of our projects. The G3 working group selected a series of primary indicators 
designed to measure our performance and inform data-driven decisions. And I invite all of you to see just how far we've come. Our dashboard can be found at guamgreengrowth.org dash dashboard. The G3 Action Framework is an overarching strategy leading us to a sustainable future, and the Micronesia Challenge is prominently featured in the Thriving Natural Resources and Sustainable Alliance sections. Together through the Micronesia Challenge, our islands can make tremendous progress over the coming decades, especially for the most vulnerable among us. This is why we are committed to embarking on a new, more ambitious challenge with you to effectively manage 50% of marine resources and 30% of terrestrial resources by 2030 across the region and to spearhead action on sustainable livelihoods and climate change. While Guam has come a long way, we know there is still much to do. Just like you, we are a small island in Micronesia our people have a long history and connection to the land and sea. While small island nations are among the least responsible for greenhouse gas emissions, we are especially vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. As we work to rebuild a stronger Guam after the devastation of COVID-19, we must also prepare for threats to human health, food security, risk to fresh water uh, resources, and increase in wildfires, changes in precipitation patterns that would increase the likelihood of droughts and costly potential damages to infrastructure incurred by higher sea level and stronger typhoons. We have had much success in addressing climate change in both national and international forums when we worked together as a region. I ask all of you to reaffirm your commitment to make the Micronesia Challenge 2030 a reality now. And Guam is very honored to be part of this very prestigious organization and under the leadership of you, President Panuelo Sidusmasi. Thank you so much, Governor Leon Guerrero, and thank you to all of our inspirational leaders for your stirring words. Your formidable leadership has made the Micronesia Challenge a shining example of regional cooperation and conservation impact. Listening to our leaders, I was struck by a few things. Even though we may approach things differently and have different strategies, we're stronger and can accomplish way more when we work together and learn from each other. And this was also reflected by all the stakeholders in the MC evaluation. The biodiversity of Micronesia is amazing and it's globally important, but it's vulnerable and it's worth managing well and conserving for future generations. And it's also integral to the health, resilience, and prosperity of Micronesian communities now. We are facing climate change, uh, the global economic shock from COVID, and there will be trillions of dollars that will go into some kinds of recovery or addressing these impacts. And once again, the leaders of Micronesia are there making sure that nature will receive positive benefits for our local communities. So thank you again for your vision and commitment to making the Micronesia Challenge a reality. It's now time for us to, to shift gears a little bit and hear from what you think has worked. So we're in a moment, we're going to put you into breakout rooms with about four to five people. And in the breakout rooms, you're gonna have a chance to share your stories. What do you think worked? What are the bright spots you're excited about that happened over the last 15 years? So bright spots are examples of what's worked, what's made a change or an impact. They can be large or small. They can be an initiative, a project, even a person or an organization you worked with. You don't need to have prepared anything in advance. All stories and all bright spots are important. What is shared in the breakout groups is not recorded. It's just a conversation. If you wanna leave your breakout group or be reallocated, you can opt to do that. Um, you'll just be returned to the plenary Zoom. 
Uh, in a few minutes, you'll automatically be placed there. Um, you should nominate someone to ask the questions that will be dropped into the chat box. And you can nominate someone to be a timekeeper so that um, everybody has a chance to speak. The timekeeper will remind participants to move to the next speaker after about five minutes. Um, you can let the conversation flow, but do make sure everyone has a chance to speak. So if you're normally a quiet person, please speak up. And if you're normally comfortable speaking, maybe pull back a little and let others speak. The questions will be dropped into the box, but they are, um, what bright spots are you most proud of in the Micronesia Challenge? Things that have helped to effectively manage marine and terrestrial areas in Micronesia to date. That's an example, or maybe it's about local capacity. Maybe it's about the sustainable finance. What happened? What, just tell a story. Why was it memorable to you? Um, for example, for me, a, the real commitment to science and developing metrics to track our progress has been a really amazing part of the MC because it really gave our local scientists and managers an opportunity to, to really show us how we're doing. And they, that effort continues to this day. Okay, we're gonna drop you in now. Welcome back. Um, we hope that that was energizing for everyone and that you have all been able to share your stories. Um, at this moment, I would like to introduce to everyone Vanji Luhan, our Micronesia Challenge Focal Point for Guam. Half a day. I've been with the Micronesia Challenge for 15 years and learned so much from everybody. We would like to invite you now to share in the chat window what you've heard that worked a few words about bright spots that you're so very proud of. And some of the things that maybe we haven't heard but you would like to share with us. We have an opportunity to capture your thoughts in the chat. So please write down as much as you can of the things that you've heard during the breakout session. We'll be able to share with everyone the uh, ideas that have come out of this session, as well as a uh, post survey. You also will be able to have an opportunity to share with us some of your other bright spots. So please don't feel shy. Hopefully you can share with some of the things that you heard in the um, breakout session we just had a few minutes ago. So someone, I think one of the things that I've learned a lot is that we've had a great opportunity to work with people within the region. Uh, it has been something that has been, we've been able to share lessons learned I think one of the highlights for me is being able to engage with young people. Um, the other thing is that we have a great program in the Micronesian Young Champions, which I think we've been seeing for a little while now. Jared, would you like to share some of the things that are in the chat? Yes, yeah, sure. So I'm looking at the chat now, and um, one of the bright spots being shared is that there is always such an incredible community of people uh, coming together from around the world to take action. I, I agree, it's, it's really inspiring to see everyone from all the different regions come together. Um, another uh, response is that 
uh, it's very encouraging to see the youth involved. Um, and yeah, we are very proud of our youth, especially our Micronesia Challenge Young Champion interns. Um, so I, I do agree with that, um, that bright spot. We've, we've had so much opportunity to learn from other people within the community and around Micronesia on just different ways that people have been able to share what works, what doesn't work, how they can get engaged in the community. One of the examples that the, our governor shared is the Humata Community Foundation. That is really group, started as a group of family members and now has expanded to many people within their own village and their own community. And another thing um, in the chat box, another response is um, all of our uh, breakout members shared how the Micronesia Challenge is fundamental to people across generations, from young champions to giving our political leaders confidence to take action. That's a great comment. I think that here on Guam, as well as what we see across the islands of Micronesia, is that one of the political policies in one island can inspire other leaders to go and do something similar to that on Guam. I know that, as well as the rest of their islands, I know that the shark sanctuary is another great example of what was happening within Micronesia at that Guam chose as well to ban shark uh, finning as well. Yes, um, another response, um, thanks Sanji, is that uh, people are inspired uh, watching friends and colleagues become leaders in conservation organizations. Yes, I agree. So the growth that happens exactly. is is inspiring. So today we're so fortunate that um, some of the people that originally started with our group have gone on to be uh, leaders and policymakers within all of our governance. That has really been inspirational. I think one of the other things that I've learned is that we're here all to support each other. Things that will help us to inspire us, but also to support us when things are difficult. We've learned a lot. I love one of the other comments is I love to hear about how partners were there when they were needed. That's exactly what I was saying too. When groups are flagging each on their focus and their funding, key partners are always there, help pushing, supporting, giving ideas. We have great partnership with all the people within the NGO community, within the um, federal government, within national government and international. So we thank all of you who are participating and wanting to be able to support all the work that we're doing. Oh. Is another, another comment is connecting people and learning and advance conver uh, conservation of nature and cultural resources. So I think that we are gonna be able to capture all of your comments and share with others all of this in the, in the uh, proceedings after this. So, hey, Gerald. Hi, <laughs> Sanji. <laughs> Um, thank you all for your responses, and um, I think uh, we would like to shift gears now and start looking towards the future. So it's a great um, transitioning period. We were talking about how there is much growth with the youth, and um, uh, so we would like to move forward to the future and making the Micronesia Challenge 2030 a reality. And to kick us off, it is now my pleasure to introduce one of our up and coming local leaders that I actually had the pleasure of supervising in Palau. Um, and I would like to welcome now, Ms. Shuri Chibana, the Micronesia Challenge Young Champion from the Republic of Palau. Ali and hello everyone. My name is Shuri Chibana and I'm a student at Palau Community College and the Micronesia Challenge Young Champion for Palau. And my experience as a young champion has helped me to understand about the work that is done day in and day out to keep Palau as we know, as how we know it is today. And this experience has truly allowed me to call Palau my home because I've gained the confidence that I know part of the work that needs to be done to care for our island home and the planet. And I dream of more opportunities where we can see our land and oceans thrive on our islands so we can truly see the beauty of our homelands. And I dream of all of us broadening our minds and asking ourselves, what more can we do to care for Palau? And 
this dream goes forth to our brothers and sisters in all of Micronesia, what more can we do to care for Micronesia? And in the next 10 years, my dream for the future would be continued support to the people and communities to effectively manage the land that gives us so much life so that this way our cultures can continue to thrive. And we survive because we know what it means to conserve and that itself is our culture because we are a people of conservation. And I would love to see more of the newer generation leading our islands towards sustainability because it's truly a matter of educating ourselves about the issues of the environment and finding ways to keep ourselves focused on sustaining our islands. So in the next 10 years, I dream that more schools are equipped to teach and promote islands, our islands, traditional knowledge and the importance of preserving our natural resources. We are small islands up to big things and we already have so much to offer. The Micronesia Challenge 2030 goals are ambitious and it needs all the region's greatest and freshest minds. So to my fellow Micronesian brothers and sisters and leaders, I ask you that you join me in reaching the Micronesia Challenge 2030. And I look forward to lo working hand in hand with you for our motherlands. Masulang and thank you. Thank you so much, Shuri. That was so wonderful to hear from one of our young champions. They are all so inspiring and will definitely lead Micronesia well into the future. I'd now like to welcome back His Excellency, President Panuelo, to share his thoughts on the way forward. Well, Shurina, I thank you. Uh, I thank you and I also uh, thank uh, Shuri uh, thank you for being a Micronesian Challenge uh, you champion. Your story uh, really amplifies the very important part of uh, empowering youth so that the youth can be the uh, ones driving us and being part of our uh, mission uh, under the Micronesia Challenge. So thank you for sharing your passion. I also want to thank the uh, Precot groups uh, uh, for sharing the, the stories, uh, the bright spot stories that we have. And to also thank uh, uh, Micronesia Challenge uh, Board and the uh, MCD Board and the Executive Director in, in terms of the endowment fund, its performance, uh, because uh, our uh, donor partners have been generous and we ourselves as uh, respective uh, members of the uh, Micronesia Challenge, we've been putting in an, our own resources to build that endowment. And I think we've reached a, a level of uh, maturity in terms of where we're going to put the uh, the uh, investments uh, into the local communities, uh, especially uh, community uh, NGOs, uh, conservation folks, and those who are volunteering to make sure these resources are uh, put to use in uh, uh, continuing to protect our our uh, natural resources. So what I will say here is uh, that the Micronesia Challenge is a path to permanent protection of our invaluable region that is highly vulnerable to climate change and other human caused uh, threats. Over the past 15 years, the Micronesia Challenge has been a highly successful uh, collaboration as we have demonstrated uh, today. Over the past 15 years, I've been saying that this is a, a, a very uh, successful collaboration, but the work of this challenge is not finished. Now we are looking had the future to our expanded goals to effectively manage 50% of our marine resources and 30% of our terrestrial uh, areas. And so doing this in protecting our, our marine resources and terrestrial areas by 2030, and to be a strong voice for climate change and sustainability in Micronesia. Our evaluation shows that our stakeholders and the Micronesian community want the Micronesian Challenge 2030 to be a reality. And you can help make this happen through our collaboration. I call on our, our partners to contribute to our Micronesian Endowment Fund 
vital to expanding the on the ground action as well as to provide the technical support to achieve our goals. I call on our local partners to continue to engage our community to redouble our efforts on the ground or on the ground efforts. So again, I call on all of us here today and those who love Micronesia to make the Micronesia Challenge 2030 a rea reality. And again, thanks to all of you for the uh, passionate stories that we've just uh, been able to share in the breakout sessions. And uh, uh, that's uh, showcasing what we've done over the past 15 years and then recommitting ourselves to uh, uh, the future uh, commitment in the next uh, decade of expanded uh, conservation. Thanks again. Thank you so much, President Panuelo. The Micronesia Challenge has been made possible thanks to the enormous support of thousands of individuals working together toward a common goal. To maintain the momentum of the next decade, this decade of action, we wanna hear from some of our supporters who are committed to making the Micronesia Challenge 2030 a reality. So it's my great pleasure to introduce a dear friend I've known since we both didn't have gray hair and now we have gray hair. Uh, Mr. Willie Koska, the Executive Director of Micronesia Conservation Trust. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sorry. Um, Your Excellencies, Governors, um, ladies and gentlemen, it's really great to see uh, so many um, familiar faces uh, join us today. Um, I'm really happy to see so many people uh, on this conference. Uh, shout out to Sylvia Earl for joining us. Thank you. Um, for the Micronesia Conservation Trust, uh, our commitment uh, continues to remain uh, for the Micronesia Challenge. And we are uh, currently updating the Micronesia Challenge Sustainable uh, Finance Plan, uh, which we hope to bring to the uh, leadership of Micronesia to adopt later this year so that we can use it to uh, support our fundraising and other um, technical resource uh, capacity uh, support moving forward. Uh, we are also working uh, with the jurisdictions to be able to uh, get uh, the financing mechanisms, the national financing mechanisms in place to receive, disperse and manage the endowment fund as well as other uh, donor grants that are co coming in. Um, we also um, commit to raising at least $10 million with our, uh, in partnership with the Micronesia uh, Regional uh, Challenge Regional Office and our Micronesia Challenge Steering Committee uh, and other partners on the ground. And uh, finally, we want to continue to support the Micronesia Challenge Bill Rayner Scholarship. We've supported uh, about 15 students uh, and uh, you know, thank you so much uh, for your continuing support. MCT continues to be committed, Kalana. Thank you so much, Willie. Um, next we'll hear from Kosi Latu, the Director General of the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Program. Thank you, Kosi. Thank you very much, uh, moderator and, and, and uh, in view of the time constraints, uh, let me say um, all protocol observes uh, and uh, good to see uh, so many um, familiar faces uh, at this very important event. And congratulations uh, to all the Micronesian countries for this very important event. And uh, also to acknowledge the president of uh, FSM, President Manuel, for this very, very important event that is hosting. Um, let me just uh, share with you just some um, uh, uh, very important areas of support where SPREP is supporting the Micronesian challenge in terms of the next decade. And uh, I'd like to kind of uh, perhaps maybe mention uh, three or four just very quick but important points. Um, and the first uh, uh, area of commitment where we are currently providing support, which will be rolled out uh, concerns the support for implementation of protected areas network or PAN. And I was very uh, 
uh, pleased to hear uh, early on when President Manuelo was talking about the need to support uh, FSM and the implementation of its FSM protected uh, areas network. And I'm happy to say, uh, President Manuelo, that uh, SPREP uh, is in a position to provide support to, uh, to the FSM uh, protected areas uh, network through uh, some targeted support that we are providing in terms of um, uh, personnel, uh, funding for personnel, in particular coordinator that will help with the framework. Uh, hopefully that support will go in some way to strengthen the capacity of uh, existing personnel in terms of uh, implementing the, the plan in FSM. We're hoping very much that that kind of capacity building will be extended to other Micronesian countries. We, we're still trying to roll out this current project where FSM is now uh, the potential uh, um, recipient. Um, I'd like to also just talk briefly about the importance of, of data, which uh, is something that we sometimes kind of forget, but uh, very much a building block. Uh, and uh, SPREP, uh, one of SPREP's role is, is in fact to help um, uh, gather, promote, share uh, information. And as all of us are aware, without information, it is very difficult to make any conservation management decisions uh, because this is the bedrock of conservation. And so um, uh, just, just to sort of um, uh, cite some, a couple of examples where we, we, we are currently uh, providing support in a broad way to the Micronesian Challenge by uh, assistance through some of the um, data support tools that we have. And I'd like to mention, just as an example, uh, what we have at the moment where the support has been provided, the Pacific Islands Protected Area Portal, the PIPA, uh, and the National Environment Portals that are already being uh, established and are being implemented. These are very important data support tools that are providing a, a, a platform for baseline information and also information that our, our Micronesian challenge countries can use to make very, very important uh, decisions. Um, I, I'd like to just mention uh, support of the Micronesian challenge also through um, you know, uh, the ongoing work that we're providing at the global level is in terms of CBD negotiations and specifically in relation of protected area targets. So as you know, many of our countries have set themselves targets at the global level in terms of protected areas. And this is a very important area, not just in terms of the global stage, but also for the Micronesian challenge. I'd like to just perhaps maybe end by just uh, again, noting that the support the data support tools that I mentioned also extend to some of the national um, state of environment reports that have been uh, uh, um, uh, provided in terms of support for Palau, Marshall Islands, and FSM in 2019, 2020. These are very important uh, reports, as you all know, because again, provides a basis, uh, sets the scene, uh, enables us to see where, where we are as countries, but also a very important uh, platform for decision making. Um, and then I want to finish off by just saying that the support that SPREP is also providing in terms of Micronesia Challenge is also through the need to uh, raise awareness and support communications within the Micronesian Challenge. And that support is coming through our, our communications and outreach uh, team. And we're currently engaged with that and we will continue to provide that support to raise awareness, to provide understanding, share, uh, the, some of the great benefits uh, out of the Micronesian Challenge and to enable support for the Micronesian Challenge goals. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Kosi. Um, I have uh, a little announcement. The CEO of the Global Environment Facility, Mr. Carlos Manuel Rodriguez, was unavailable to, come, to be here with us today, but he did want to send this message. He very much values the important conservation commitment that the Micronesian countries have made and continues. they will continue to support the Micronesia Challenge. Thank you. Uh, now I would like to um, introduce uh, Susanna Van, sorry, 
Vanka in Bete Tuisese. I'm sorry for butchering your name, Susana, the Pacific Regional Director for Conservation International. Your Excellencies, respected heads of state for Micronesia Island Forum member countries, heads of regional organizations of the Pacific non-governing non-government organizations and of course development partners and our present and future nature conservation stewards to the youth out there it's been really exciting just to hear your voices uh, participants ladies and gentlemen conservation international is thrilled to join these many partners in celebrating the vision and leadership of the ocean micro uh, micronesia challenge and of course we applaud the even more um, ambitious targets that we have set for ourselves. The Micronesia Challenge has led the way and spearheaded the global shift in fostering effective and regional collaboration. The success of the Micronesia Challenge has been an inspiration the world over. And with your vision for 2030, it will con continue to be a leading, provide the leading edge for conservation at the global platform. Conservation International is proud to have been part of the Micronesia Challenge for the past 20 years and we certainly look forward to continue to support Micronesia states and communities to designate and start up effective management of ocean conservation areas within exclusive zones. The Blue Nature Alliance um, that was launched yesterday and catalytic, uh, you know, supported by Conservation International, the Future Report Trust and Global Environmental Facility amongst others is one of the mechanisms through which Conservation International looks forward uh, to facilitate continuous support through the Micronesia Challenge 2030. Congratulations to your excellencies, and we certainly look forward to continue to work uh, with the Micronesia Trust. Thank you, Susana. Uh, I now would like to introduce Spencer Thomas, the Grenada, the ambassador and special envoy for multilateral agreements uh, for the Grenada in the Caribbean. And he is also on the board of the Global Island Partnership. Thank you, thank you, Chair and um, Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a pleasure and an honor for me to represent the Global Island Partnership at this very important event here today. GLISPA has been a long champion for the Micronesian Challenge and commits to enhanced cooperation and collaboration. I must take this opportunity to welcome our newest GLISPA leader, the governor of Guam, and we heard from her earlier on this evening, and we are assured that GLISPA continues to have global leadership high leadership from the presidents of, 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 the, of the organization. So we welcome governor to this, to this forum. The Micronesian challenge was the inspiration for many similar efforts around the world. This has already been stated many times, but I can attest to the Caribbean challenge initiative. It was the, the, uh, the, the card for the umbrella of the, um, of the Caribbean challenge initiative also the Aloha Plus Challenge and the Best Challenge for the European Islands and many others. The Micronesian Challenge has been a pioneer and continues to demonstrate great leadership, S setting ambitious goals as we just heard this afternoon, uh, well, this afternoon for me, and linking to the SDGs and also the 2030 timeframe, the local 2030 islands network, these are new frontiers for island leadership. So GLISPA stands ready to support Micronesian Challenge as you forge that new path forward. We say to you, well done. Congratulations on your past achievement. And already we want to congratulate you for 2030 because we are sure that you will fulfill the objectives that you just said. Let me then take this opportunity to continue to lift up islands and lift up the voices of islands and to show the rest of the world the way forward. And we thank Micronesia and the Micronesian Challenge for doing just that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Spencer.
And now I would like to introduce Celeste Connors, the Executive Director of the Hawaii Green Growth Initiative. Aloha Excellencies and distinguished guests. Four hours ago, United States Special Envoy for Climate Change, John Kerry, acknowledged the significance of islands and the importance of islands working together and taking local action to address global challenges the way the Micronesia Challenge has. With his announcement of US support to the local 2030 Islands Network, Special Envoy Kerry was joined in this commitment by US Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm and Hawaii Governor David Ige, who pledged their support for islands. This new and innovative peer-to-peer -peer global network focuses on island leadership in achieving the global sustainable development goals and climate resilience through an island values and cultural context and builds on efforts announced today by Micronesian leaders with the reinvigorated Micronesia Challenge commitment. The secretariat for this network is jointly undertaken by the Hawaii Green Growth Local 2030 Hub and the Global Island Partnership and will include technical support from NOAA and the U.S. National Renewable Energy Lab, which will help advance the goals that you have announced today. Together, the Micronesia Challenge and the Local 2030 Islands Network reinforce the significance of islands working together toward a sustainable future, engaged political leadership, public-private partnerships, goal setting and measures, and real on-the-ground implementation that makes a difference in the lives of island people. What has really impressed me about the Micronesia Challenge is that this collective commitment has transcended changes in political leadership and new administrations since 2006, with all the leaders remaining involved and committed. This speaks to the power of island communities to come together across sectors and silos for the good of the broader community, which the rest of the world can learn from. Hawaii's very own Aloha Plus Challenge was inspired by your leadership and the Micronesia Challenge, which inspired comparable commitments across the Caribbean and Europe. Thank you and mahalo, mahalo nui for your leadership. I congratulate you on the success of the Micronesia Challenge and look forward to the next phase during this critical decade of action and to our continued collaboration, including through the Local 2030 Islands Network. Aloha. Thank you so much, Celeste. Um, last, we'll hear from uh, Jennifer Morris, the CEO of my organization, The Nature Conservancy. And unfortunately, Jennifer sends her regrets as well. She couldn't join us, but she has recorded her message via video. Hello, everyone. I'm Jennifer Morris, CEO of The Nature Conservancy. For more than 30 years, The Nature Conservancy has worked in partnership with Micronesian communities to improve fisheries, strengthen climate adaptation, establish protected areas, and drive innovative conservation finance. In 2006, Micronesian leaders made a bold commitment to nature through the initial Micronesia Challenge. TNC was proud to be among the first partners to pledge support, providing $3 million to help seed the endowment. We were also pleased to provide technical and financial assistance as a founding partner of the Micronesia Challenge Regional Support Team. The enormous progress we've seen over the past decade and a half has been inspiring, resulting in around 32% of the region's nearshore marine area under some form of management and inspiring similar initiatives around the globe. Now, as we join together in this decade of action, TNC is again very proud to recognize Micronesia's bold and inspirational leadership in expanding their commitments. The Nature Conservancy is pleased to renew our own commitment to the Micronesia Challenge 2030, pledging to invest $5 million over five years to work with partners in Micronesia to improve the management effectiveness of protected areas, integrate resource management, climate adaptation and sustainable livelihoods, as well as to improve the social, economic and environmental performance of fisheries. This next phase of the Micronesia Challenge comes at a critical time the last decade we have to reverse biodiversity loss and address the climate emergency. We look forward to our continued work together to help build a brighter, more sustainable future for Micronesian communities and for the incredible natural resources that sustain them. Over five years to work with partners in Micronesia to improve the management effectiveness of protected areas integrate resource management, climate adaptation and sustainable livelihoods, as well as to improve the social, economic and environmental performance of fisheries. This next phase of the Micronesia Challenge comes at a critical time, the last decade we have to reverse biodiversity loss and address the climate emergency. 
We look forward to our continued work together to help build a brighter, more sustainable future for Micronesian communities and for the incredible natural resources that sustain them. Thank you so much to all our supporters who are committed in making the Micronesia Challenge a reality. We are almost near the end of the event. As we know, it takes a village to raise a child. You are part of our Micronesia Challenge village. We would like to hear from you, see how you can help to make Micronesia Challenge 2030 a reality. It can be done either as an individual or on behalf of your country or the organization. Please feel free to share your email or your or you can contact us at mcro.coordinator at gmail.com. And so right now we would like to conclude the event. And if you can please type into the chat window, what is one thing, small or large, that you will do to help the Micronesia Challenge 2030? We are short on time, but we would still like to capture all your responses. It could be anything that you can help because one thing that we've learned over the last 15 years is we all can contribute to something great like this. So, all right, so responses are coming in. The responses are coming in, so that's great. Thank you so much. Um, I know that uh, some of the things that you can share is if you are skilled in website design, in introducing things from your community, so one of the comments and uh, something that they would like to commit is the ability for the Pacific Islands Managed and Protected uh, Area Community, which is everyone calls them, PIMPAC, will commit to hosting a regional discussion to help define management effectiveness and how to track it while supporting the MC2030. Thank you so much. I know all of us were, are anxious to participate in that new event. It's so weak have more responses coming in and so it would be important i think for us to put things in the chat because that will be the way that we are going to be able to report your information we are as we've been talking about bright spots are so important to do. so please write uh, mm -hmm. something that you can do I, uh, one of another responses, I'll continue to support the community's desire to protect areas they want to and continue to be a mouth to share into um, information about the Micronesia Challenge. So thank you so much. That's great. Sharing information is really important with our communities and inter islands as well as within our islands. And I believe we have time for one more. And so, uh, uh, somebody else has um, committed to supporting a plastic-free ocean. That's, I think we're all tied to our ocean, so that's very important. Yes, so thank you all so much, and we are grateful for all of your contributions, large or small. Um, and we welcome you to um, celebrate the Micronesia Challenge 2030 with us. Thanks so much. Jara and Vanji, and it was just wonderful to hear all the new commitments and expressions of support. I'd now like to welcome back President Panuelo to take us on home, make some concluding remarks to this amazing event. Yeah. Thank you again. Uh, you know, our efforts under the uh, Micronesian uh, Challenge would not have been as uh, effective and successful without the uh, support and participation of uh, all of you. So I want to again acknowledge how, how grateful we are uh, under the Micronesia Challenge uh, to uh, some of you who just spoke a while ago, uh, our executive director for the MCT, uh, Uli Kostiga, Kosi Latu, director uh, uh, general of our very own uh, SPREP, uh, the regional organization, and then our TNC partner CEO, who uh, uh, made their message uh, through a recorded version, uh, Spencer Thomas, Granada's ambassador. We also thank you. All of you uh, organizers of this uh, forum, I want to extend my very, very best and uh, 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 how grateful I am that we're able to come together as a village, like you have said. So thank you for uh, joining me today as a host. Uh, to celebrate the Micronesia Challenge. 
while we would have liked to have you join us in person here in uh, Pelliger, Pond Bay, our capital. Uh, we look forward to uh, COVID-19 subsiding and then being able to come together in person. Uh, but we're glad that we're uh, together uh, today to celebrate the uh, achievements under the uh, Micronesia Challenge. I am proud of all the stories that we have shared today about what has worked. It is incredible to see how uh, when we come together with a united call uh, that we can create enormous uh, change uh, to what's most important to us, our habitat, our biodiversity, our uh, environment, what sustains us. Thank you to my fellow Micronesian leaders who are each leading their own ambitious and innovative locally led commitments at the Palau National Marine Sanctuary as Palau president highlighted uh, and protected area network uh, to Raymond Lok uh, to, to the Kwam Green Crowd Initiative and the CNMI Sustainability Plan together with the Blue Prosperity Micronesia are each examples of how we take locally relevant action. Together, we are regionally connected in the Micronesia Challenge 2030, the next decade, to help us show our united commitment to creating a path to permanent protection of our invaluable region, as well as spearheading the global calls. So thank you, everyone who joined us today uh, to our critical donors and supporters, as well as people working so hard on the ground to make this a possible reality. The achievements we've made and looking forward to the next decade of action uh, in making this uh, call under the Micronesia Challenge a reality. So thank you all again and wish you all the best. Uh, keep uh, safe and healthy wherever you are. Thanks again, and Kaselelia Mang from uh, Thorn Bay to all of you.